It's the Tim Conway Comedy Hour. With guest star, Mickey Rooney. And special guest star, Dorothy Lamore. And now, here he is, Mr. Gimmick himself, Tim Conway. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, you hear that applause? Ah, is that wild? You know why they're applauding so much? Because they know that there's a wild excitement coming here this hour, that just the fervor, the, the anticipation of a great show coming up, I, I wish I could also feel that excitement. And the way the guys around... You want to hold the work, guys? Thank you. <clears throat> the way they feel the excitement around here for this show that's coming up. Well, tonight, got some good news for you. You know, as I told you, that uh, Carol Burnett, Jim Neighbors, and Glenn Campbell all do their variety shows here. And now, now this big one is done here. And what used to be the big three is now the big four. So, um, I was out here in the parking lot the other day, and uh, out here at CBS, and they have these signs where your name is, of course, you know, and it says... Mr. Campbell. So uh, I was on the way to get my car over at the uh, Atlas U Park, and I saw Glenn in his car. So, you know, Carol has Jim Neighbors on her first show every year, so I thought maybe it'd be kind of exciting to have Glenn Campbell on my show. So I went up to his car and I said, Glenn, how'd you like to be on my show? Well, evidently his power windows aren't working because they were up and, well, he didn't put them down. But I could see his lips moving on the other side of the window. And I chased his car out here to uh, Fairfax, and then I lost him. But I think, from what I could see him going inside, I think he's going to be on the show. So it'll be a big one for us, and it'll certainly help his show. But listen, enough about my friends here at the studio. I want to talk about some friends around the show tonight. Come on over here. You see this? It's an empty cloud in the old corral. And I'll tell you why. The people are over here, that's why. And you know why they're over here? Because this guy right here, and this little girl right here, the three of us are inseparable. You read those movie magazines, and all the time you see Tim Conway, Mickey Rooney, and Dorothy L'Amour. Always together, the big three. I'll tell you, sometimes I go over to Mickey's house to pick him up, and then we go over to Dorothy's house to pick her up to go out and eat. And I'll get in the car, and Mickey will say, how are you? And I'll say, don't say anything. Don't say anything at all. Just wait till we pick up Dorothy so she won't miss anything. You know what I mean? So here we are, the big three together again. Three of my closest friends. I guess we must have made, oh, ten of those road shows together. And Mickey and I and those doggone Andy Hardy pictures are really great. So they're together with me again tonight. We're going to have a ball. Fortunately, Mickey can wear my clothes, so I gave him a tuxedo. Tonight. So how about a big hand for two of my real close friends, Dorothy Lamore and Mickey Rooney? <clears throat> <laughs> Three buddies together again. Big one coming up, folks. A real big one. A lot of laughs and all that stuff. So let's get on with the show. From Television City in Hollywood, the Tim Conway Comedy Hour. Tonight, also featuring Bobby Bloom, Bellenden Somerville, Bonnie Bolin, Art Matrano, McLean Stevenson, Sally Strawberry, and the Tom Hansen Dancer. Here's Tim, along with Mickey Rooney, Dorothy Lamar, to show us why some people think our law courts are in trouble. All rise. Case of the City versus Sarah Rindiff reconvening. The Honorable Judge Jonathan Fulwiley presiding. Be seated. How are you now, Miss Rindiff? Fine. Huh? Enjoy your luncheon. Oh, it was wonderful, and thank you for this bearing. Oh, it's my <laughs> pleasure, my pleasure. Now, would the prosecuting attorney care to, uh, to continue on where he left off? Thank you, Your Honor. Mm. Yes, Your Honor, before lunch, as you know, proceeding with the case of Miss Rindiff here. As you know, Miss Rindiff was seen leaving an all-night cocktail party. 
which time she drove south on La Cienica Boulevard and crashed into a parked car. That is the case to this point. However, in this case, she was also seen in the company of a short married judge. <laughs> who, of course, remains anonymous at this time since he ran away from the scene of the accident. Immaterial and irrelevant. Well, Your Honor, oh. I think we have proven here beyond the shadow of doubt that Miss Rinda is guilty. <clears throat> Thank you. You, defense attorney, would you care to reply, rebuttal? No, Your Honor. No. You wouldn't? No. Would both the counsel care to approach the bench, please? Huh? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Gentlemen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is for not replying. <laughs> That's for butting in, huh? <laughs> Be ready tonight about 8 o'clock, will you, darling? Yes. yes. Uh, do I take my car? No, no, we'll take mine this time. I'll tell my wife that I'm on a business joint. Uh, uh, your Honor, uh, if, if I may, sir, uh, uh, this isn't regular courtroom procedure, Your Honor. May we have another conference? <laughs> I think he wants to see us again. No, no, I think he just wants to see you this time. Just me? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Does he look mad? <laughs> no. Oh, he's okay this time. All right. Oh. Yes? You're beginning to bug me. <clears throat> you said he wasn't mad. Your Honor, if I might continue with the case. You might. <clears throat> Miss Rindip. May I call her Miss Rindip? Yes, of course you may. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Miss Rindip, is it true that you did leave an all-night cocktail party? Yes. And you did drive south at 4.30 on the morning on La Cienica Boulevard? Yes. You did. <laughs> is it true that at the time of the accident, a short married judge was biting your neck? <laughs> your Honor. Do I have to be intimidated like this? Do I have to sit here and let him ridicule me? Do I have to take I don't this? think so, my darling. I don't think so, please. Please. Please, I don't think so. <laughs> you definitely do not. Could I address the jury, perhaps? Of you may. Thank you. Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I am trying to prove that this... Uh, uh, this beautiful, attractive, <laughs> sweet, innocent lady smashed into a parked car with a short married judge. Uh, that's nothing to do whatsoever with this case. Well, Your Honor, I am merely trying to prove that this woman is guilty. Objection. Well, you can't object. You're the judge. I can to object. You can't object. I... <laughs> you can object. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is obviously an open and shut case. There's no reason for any deliberation. May I have your verdict at this time? We find the defendant guilty. Guilty? Will the uh, jury please approach the bench? <laughs> Your Honor, after careful deliberation, we find the defendant not guilty. Case dismissed. <laughs> Bye, Teddy Bear. Goodbye, my darling. See you tonight. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. Next case, State versus Miss Beverly Choo Choo Williams being charged with disorderly conduct in a bar with a short married judge. Come in. Come in. Come in. Make this one fast, because Choo Choo has to be back to work at 3 o'clock, okay? <laughs> Give me one for good luck. <laughs> you did that.
Have you seen them? Are you sure? I haven't seen them. They're great. Here comes the big thing. Attention! Ladies, gentlemen, be seated. <clears throat> gentlemen, I have here the information for our top secret mission. Now, this information has been compiled by secret agents behind enemy lines. At this present time, this information is classified, will remain classified after you leave this room. And all the vaults to you are our secret target. Backhausen. Secret target is Backhausen. <laughs> Backhausen. Uh, in order, gentlemen, to obtain perfect weather conditions, we're going to have to leave at a, at a secret time. 0700. The secret time is 0700. <laughs> Gentlemen, we are going to be hitting two targets, so we won't drop our full bomb load at the first target. We'll be dropping uh, approximately 2,700 pounds. Right. <laughs> so, uh, we'll also be, we'll be hitting two targets. And the second target that we'll be hitting will be... Wendel Hoffen. 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 And since we won't have enough fuel to come back to home base, we're going to be half landing at a secret base, which will be Bluebird. Wrong. Huh? Oh, that's wrong, sir. It's Cyprus. <laughs> well, see, now you're wrong. It says right here, you will land at Bluebird, which will be the code word for Cyprus. <laughs> Well, I have a good job after the war. Yes, sir, you'll be a banker. You think I'll make a lot of money, or...? About 30000 after taxes. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, how about kids? Am I going to have any kids? Uh... You'll have four kids, sir. Two boys, two girls. Oh, no. <laughs> oh I, uh, that's Bobby, sir. Oh, cute. Seven pounds, three ounces of birth. Oh. And your wife's doing fine. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen. Is uh, anything else we should know? Yes, sir, you should see the medic. Well, I haven't got time to see the medic right now. I'll get this back in the top secret file. Better see the medic now, sir. A little bit later. Thank you, gentlemen. First building on your right, sir, with the Red Cross. Can't miss it. This is a cue card. Uh, a lot of programs use them. Uh, we don't hear, but uh, a lot of programs use them. And a lot of guys can't even get along without them. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to work. Hope you have a nice evening. This is Harold Lassiter, KLEV News. See you tomorrow. <laughs> okay, fellas, that's a wrap. Good night. Boy, Harold, I don't know how you do it. 4,732 consecutive shows without one flub. I mean, how do you do it? Talent. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Lassiter. Good night, Bonnie. No, Mr. Lassiter, it's Sally. I'm sorry, Sally. <laughs> Got a match? Oh, sure thing, Mr. Lassiter. <laughs> Anything for you, sir. Thanks. <laughs> wow, it's getting late. Yeah. See you all tomorrow.
I've been run over, but I feel fine. I'm all right. You can go home now. Time for the Tom Hansen dancers. You know something? Everywhere I go, people are saying, boy, the dances are really great, and the dancing looks good on the show and everything, and the dancers are really cute, and the dancing is really going well on this show, and they're having a lot of fun with it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If that kind of talk doesn't stop, there won't be any more dancing on this show. <laughs> so you better enjoy it. I didn't understand this one. <laughs> and now it's time for culture on this show. Isn't it a little late for that? <laughs> so far in our shows, we haven't had what we call a serious moment. And this evening, I'd like to spend just a serious moment with you and read one of my favorite poems. It's called The Seasons. All through my life, for many reasons, each year I've loved the different seasons. 
And I recall each time they started. What joy. Hello. Well, this is the time that CBS allots me every week called the personality spot, where you get a chance to like me. However, we've had quite a few of these already, and we feel that you like me pretty much now. So uh, we're going to kind of change the spot tonight. As you know, when you're in show business and you get a pretty good name in show business, you start what they call merchandising things, and you make a lot of money on the side, what with your record albums and things of that nature. So we decided to do some merchandising on this show. <clears throat> I'm now connected with the Tim Conway shoes. <laughs> That's a, a little item that we got together, and uh, <clears throat> we'll be selling these shoes on the show. Now, at this time, we don't have a lot of them. I mean, we're no suckers. We aren't going to go out and make a lot of these shoes and get stuck with them. At this time, all we have is the model at an eight and a half D. <laughs> So what we'd like you to do is send in and uh, tell us how much you think these shoes are worth, what everything is fair, we'll kind of average it out, and then we'll get a price on them and make up some and then send them out to you. Now, if these go real well, we're thinking of going into flashlights and pens and things of that nature. And, as you know, uh, I have a lot of Rango whistles left over. <laughs> Which we're going to try and uh, unload on this show. <clears throat> so. Send in for this item. It's the Tim Conway shoe. We'll see how they go. Uh, a lot of the members of the cast already have theirs, so it's working out real well. <laughs> Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. <laughs> Stay tuned for the second portion of the Tim Conway Comedy Hour with Tim's guests, Dorothy L'Amour and Mickey Rooney. And now, we return for the second portion of the Tim Comedy Conway Hour. I'm sorry. Come on, Bessie. We better get out of here. The Knights are meeting again. I wonder what they talk about at these meetings, Ducky. Gentlemen, the meeting of the Knights of the Half Round Table come to order. Be seated. Tardy four weeks in a row, make a note of that. Sir Philip Wadley, here. All the knights are here except for Sir Felix, who is doing from out of town any moment. I don't care where he's coming out of town from. I want to know if
Are you quite comfortable? Well, gentlemen, I get to the report right away. It's a good report this month. Gentlemen, the wizard has come up with a brand new weapon. Until next month's meeting. Why are you slowing down? Is there something wrong? There's nothing wrong. We'll slow down if I want to slow down. What are you stopping here for? We need to get something to eat? No, we're not getting anything to eat. Why are you honking? Are you signaling someone? Hey, hey, who's that little guy coming over here? Is he riding with us? Oh, uh, yeah, get out. Let him in, will you? I'm not getting out. I'm not giving up my window well, seat. Well, let him in then. We're going to get over. Hi, Arnold. Right. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. 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 I didn't mean to go. Sit right up here, Arnold. There you go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, could I have your attention, please? Um, Arnold here will be riding with us from now on. How do you do? Arnold here will be riding with us from now on. That's right. Arnold will be riding with us from now on. Uh, is he married? Boy, that's inconsiderate. Rude and inconsiderate. Is that right? I mean, the least you could do would be to tell us. I mean, we're paying passengers. We have a say-so in this car as to who rides. Maybe he's related to the driver. Uh -huh. Arnold is not related to the driver. This carpool happens to be operating at a loss. Now, Arnold here puts me in the black. That is that. Uh, is he engaged? Arnold, I don't know whether he's engaged. Yeah. Oh, that may be that. But I'm going to tell you something. There's no room. I mean, look how he's sitting. Oh, what do you mean? He's a little guy. You hardly even oh. know he's here. Oh! Oh, oh crap. Well, after all, it's my car. I can have him ride with me if I want to. I just think that we ought to all get to learn to like him. I mean, after all, he is going to be riding with us, so let's all get to like him. Well, why doesn't somebody like him? Uh huh? Uh, tell you what, Arnold. <laughs> Why don't you tell that jo uh, joke you told me the other day? You know that one, that real snappy one you told me? <laughs> Go ahead, they'll love it. There, there are the, these two guys, you see. We heard it. <laughs> okay, okay, what's all the whispering going on back there? Come on, there'll be no whispering in my car. What is it? Oh, nothing. It's just that we've decided we don't like him. We tried, honestly. I mean, we really tried. Yeah, but he just isn't likable. Right. I don't like little guys anyway. See, I had a little guy who was a sergeant of mine in, in, in the army in Guam, and I don't like little guys. Point is, there is no room for another passenger, period. Yeah, it's nothing personal. It's just him. He sends out bad vibrations. Right. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Look, Walner, if I want to put ten more people in this car, I'll put them in this car. You know what? You know what you are? You are greedy. Look, why don't you buy a bus? Then you could take 40 little Arnolds to work. <laughs> why don't you take the bus? Then that'll solve all our problems. <laughs> well, what's wrong with you? Could you, could you? could you do me a favor? Pull over to the side because I'm feeling a little sick. See, I, 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 I don't ride well in the center. <laughs> I'm not very kind. All right, I'll pull up. Tell you why, please. Just change places. Warner. Warner. Yes. Change Warner. places. I'm not giving up my window seat. I don't. Ah, uh, good for you, Wilna. You don't... stick to your guns. We'll back you. Yeah, we'll back you all the way, Wilna. I, 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 could you, could you please pull over? I, I, I'm uh, pulling over. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'm not moving. Huh? I am not. Will moving. you let him out? I'm no. sick. Let the man out, officer. Will you tell him to let? You go, officer. Uh, how many seats you got up front? Huh? Uh, 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 just the two. How many passengers? Uh, just the three. So I got the two and nine. Uh, officer, do you know anybody with a carpool that might have a, an automatic shift? <laughs> Boy, the strangest things can happen in a Chinese restaurant. Like what? Yeah, like what? Mm. Mm. 
That was just a great dinner. I love Chinese food. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hey, why don't you have a fortune cookie? Mm. Thank you. can't be that bad. It's, uh, they just make these things up and put them in here. I don't think anybody has any personal interest. Could I see that a minute, please? Give me. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> Could I read that? <laughs> this react in a different way that's really a scream that's about the funniest thing I've seen in a long time really that's dumb stand on a table and dance on it like that did you read this and bark like a dog that's funny and you huh sit down will you you got the whole uniform just for this thing is this some kind of a joke you thought up huh don't you realize there's people out here you take up their valuable time with garbage like this tune in a show at this time of night some dumb guy comes up with some dumb thing like this. You shouldn't have any part of this, for crying out loud. You know better than that. React in a different way. How'd I do? I didn't have much practice. <laughs> Lawyer's here to see you. Mr. Oh. Dalton? You got five minutes. Thank you. Andy, oh. Andy, how are you, how nice are to you see boy? You. Looks fine. Thank You're you. white, but fine. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, Thank any you. word? Uh, about what, Andy? What do you mean, about what? If I, uh, any word at all about my appeal? <laughs> Andy, it's, uh, it's like I told you, these things, these things take time. I know. Well, I. I just don't understand it at all, Mr. Dalton. You don't understand what, Andy? Well, I mean, after all, I get a simple $27 parking ticket, and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm in prison for five years. <laughs> I, I just don't understand. Andy, we've gone over this time and again. That's not the point. The point is your car was not parked in a loading zone. Well, it just seems to me that if you'd have paid that $27 ticket five years ago when they asked you to, uh, I just think that I wouldn't be here any, you know what I mean? I mean, it just seems like kind of a dumb thing to me. Take the easy way, Andy. Huh? That's your suggestion? No, sir, not me, Andy. Andy, this is more than a parking violation we're fighting. This is a test case. It's one man against outdated laws. Boy, you're not in prison because you parked in a loading zone. You're in prison as a symbol of justice. Oh, I don't know. This, uh, you know, this isn't fair to my wife, Margie Dell. I mean, she's been sitting at home for five years. Don't you she... worry about Margie Dell. You know something, Andy? It's like I said to her just the other day. Honey, we're going to fight this thing in the end. And do you know what she said to me? She said, sweetheart, you're right. Don't you worry yourself about Margie Dell, boy. We're going to be just fine. <laughs> Yeah, well, that makes me feel a lot better, you know? Well, it should, boy. It's like I was telling Margie Dell the other night at the drive-in movie. I said, honey, this could be a long, long battle for Andy. And do you know what she whispered in my ear? What? She said, Snuggums. What? 
<laughs> she said snookums. I know. Oh, that's what she said, huh? Yeah. That's great, boy. You know, one night I was over at your place and going through your things, and uh, I ran across these cufflinks, Andy. I said, baby, can I keep these? I want to wear them for Andy. You know, as a constant reminder of where he is and where we are. She said, okay. Yeah. Well, what about the appeal, though? Any well, word on that at all? We were talking about that at breakfast the other day, Margie. Dog. <laughs> It's one of those, you know, who knows, tipping. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Uh, you were supposed to see the judge on Tuesday, weren't you? I couldn't see the judge on Tuesday, Andy. Margie Dell and I were at the beach house until Thursday night. We didn't get back till midnight. Traffic bumper to bumper all the way. Incidentally, it's a good thing you got uh, air conditioning in that car of yours. Works like a charm. <laughs> but there is one thing, Andy. The slats in the dock are a little loose. I mean, a guy's going to break his neck out there someday, and you're going to have yourself a lawsuit. In fact, the matter is, I tripped and fell in the water, and... Uh, Got your watch a little wet there. <laughs> <'Cause>, um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, that's the watch Margie Dell gave me for my first anniversary. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. We took all that lovey-dovey stuff off the back. Works like a charm. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, yeah, you know, I think if we don't get through with this appeal, though, I'm, I could be in here another two, three, five years. Who knows? Andy, it's only time. What's time? Now, yeah. oh, wait a minute. That could be Margie Dell. That woman can't wait for anything. Huh? Uh, I'll be down in a minute, honey. What? Okay, Snookums, I'll tell him. <laughs> mm, sweetheart. Andy, Margie Dell says hi. Yeah. <laughs> you know something? You ought to see her, Andy. She had her hair frosted and her nose fixed. Oh, she looks good. You know, it means a lot to a man when a woman takes care of herself. Yeah, well, I know. Yeah, sure does. Well, I gotta get going, Andy. We're on our way to Dayton. I want uh, the folks to meet Margie Dell. Uh-huh. Guard! Yeah. Uh, well, you'll be working on that appeal, won't you? Oh, day and night, Andy, day and night. That's all me and Margie Dell talk about. Now, yeah. you keep your chin up. Yeah, right. Get your bed fixed. Uh-huh. <laughs> Boy, you pay a little bit more. It's sure worth it to get a good lawyer. <laughs> I tell you, I still got a lot of show left in me. We're really rolling towards the end there. I tell you what, somebody run upstairs. See if we can get five more minutes. See if you can buy five more minutes. Go on, really, we're running to the news. Go ahead. Tell them. I'm telling you, we're still hot. Mickey, Dorothy, really, we're... Go ahead, run up. See what they say. What the heck, you know. We'll wait here. Okay, listen, I want to thank my two guests tonight, really. No kidding. Dorothy, you're absolutely sensational. A lot of good talk up front, really. <laughs> thank you, Tim. Thank you. And... Guy, huh? Together again, huh? <laughs> I want to ask you something. Now. It's kind of, uh, I know, it's a little offhand and all that. Who's the funniest guy you ever worked with? Huh? Who's the funniest guy you ever worked with? I'll check on that five minutes in a minute. Okay, we'll try and get it up there. Yeah, right, okay. Right, guys, see you a little later. Well, Dorothy and... Mickey and I are off to one of those Hollywood places, one of those crazy wild joints again, just to sit down and have some more laughs, probably continue on with the evening. Before I go, though, I want to thank the cover of Look, Time, and also Life magazine. And also, my personal thanks to Chris Nixon and Don Ho. Thank you. And also, of course, to my cast, Glenn Stevenson, Bellin at Somerville, Art Metrano. <laughs> And Bonnie Boland, Sally's brothers, and of course, great Tom Hansen dancers. Thank you very much for joining us again this week. And before I go, I just want to say, gee, it's all fine and dandy, sugar candy, when I'm with you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Your announcer speaking.